netbook petting zoo over there in case you want to go pet some netbooks. Uh, I'm going to give you a bit of background on myself while I get set up. Uh, I started covering mobile uh, five years ago. I was working for BNet TV and I got out of mobile about uh, well, when I launched Netbook News because well, when the economic downturn hit, I kind of got tired of hearing the same thing. And I'm glad to hear mobile's finally coming around and that the walled garden really is coming down and there actually is some carrier into place so you guys can actually start to get your really innovative apps out into the stores and out into the real world. So I'm really excited for mobile um, that it's kind of coming around finally. And I'm here to kind of make sure that everyone who's developing for mobile remembers the netbook, remembers the fact that all the devices, they're not converging onto one. I got very tired of hearing that. The mobile phone is not going to be the end all and be all. It's about uh, an ecosystem of technology. And the netbook and the mobile phone are only secondary to your home or work PC. So it's all about uh, recognizing the ecosystem and remembering that all of these things, they have to play together and they have to kind of, you all who are developing, have to remember that they need to work cross-platform and cross-technology. So, here's my presentation. So, who uses netbooks, just in case you don't know? The average age is 54 to 64. So, the netbook is not an early adopter device. No, actually, this would be the uh, demographic that has money, uh, which is why I tend to like the report on it. <laughs> So all of you who are thinking, oh my god, no, no, these people don't know how to adopt. These people actually do know how to adopt. Um, they need things that are easy for them to use because they're willing to use these devices as mobile devices out in the community. And if you're creating devices that are too, or um, applications that are too complicated, uh, then they probably won't fly. So it's all about usable apps, all about apps that you can actually use while you're, while you're, um, while you're on the go, and syncing these netbook <coughs> apps with apps on your phone. So it's all about the interplay between the internet you find on your phone and the internet you find online. So if you guys can really remember that, the whole space will probably move forward a lot more smoothly. So as somebody who doesn't develop, that's my request from all of you. And uh, the other one is soccer moms, actually. Uh, <laughs> soccer moms are one of the biggest users of netbooks. And these moms, they like their Blackberries, they like their phones that do the things. Um, they like all that stuff because they're they're all women on the go, right? They're bringing their kids to soccer practice. They're going to coffee shops with their friends. Uh, women, soccer moms, are actually a huge money spender, right? And they like to spend it on their technology because it looks good or it's pretty. It doesn't necessarily need to be the fastest or the best because they don't ask questions like, how many frames per second can I get while I'm gaming that? They don't care. Right? And I'll be honest with you, neither do I have the time. I mean, if I'm looking for a device that I'm actually looking to use out there, I don't care if I can't use Photoshop occasionally on it, or if I can't render HD video. I mean, half, like, half the average population isn't looking for a power machine because they have one at home. Right? So it's all about the ecosystem. Right? You, I, well, most of you in the room will develop on smartphones. Right? And a lot, a lot of, uh, I used to get a lot of really bad questions like, you know, the netbook will never compete with the smartphone. You know, every, everyone's always going to use a, a smartphone over a net because it fits in your pocket. But I mean, I'm not going to make phone calls on my netbook, right? You're using it as a productivity device. You use your smartphone as a time-saving device, right? So you can check your Facebook, you can check your email, you can go and do things on the go and be really quick about it. But when you go and you actually want to do high productivity while you're on the road, you're going to use a netbook because the keyboard ergonomically is just better for you. And you can check out all the netbooks over there. For all of you who haven't seen one since the original series where the keyboards are really crappy, right? Keyboards have evolved and netbooks are okay. So now I'm going to talk about, if you guys didn't know, Intel and Nokia had a love child. So Moblin and Mimo got together and made Mego. Uh, <laughs> so basically, what is Mego? It is, here, I can actually, you guys can read that. <coughs> but what it basically is, is it's the Moblin Linux kernel that Intel has been developing. And they've given it, uh, or they're working in partnership with the Mimo team of Nokia. So basically you can pour Qt on top of um, Migo or Moblin. 
So this is um, a really interesting move for the mobile community because this opens you guys up um, to, this is what I've been talking about, the ecosystem of devices, right? Mobile is a single part of that. So when you're developing, try to remember that you're, that you're gonna want your application to run on multiple devices. And uh, Nokia and Intel are actually working towards that. So if you develop for the Meagle platform, I don't actually work for Intel, by the way, <laughs> just to get that out of the way. If you do develop for the Meagle platform, in the future, in their store, you'll be able to port onto netbooks, possible in, in vehicle devices, which uh, should be interesting to see how NVIDIA handles that one. Um, connected TV, so IPTV, and media phones. So Nokia and Intel's main push for this is that when you develop your application for it, you'll be able to port onto all of these devices just by virtue of being in their um, Mego platform. Now, I can't field any technical questions on this, but I can talk about the ecosystem and how they see it moving forward. Um, I, have, I have had a look at the Mego uh, build. Uh, it's pretty impressive, and just think about, actually, if, you, if anyone has ever seen Modlin, uh, it was terrible. I didn't like it, I thought it wasn't usable, I thought for a Linux-based system it, did, it was slow, and I didn't want to talk about it because I thought it was terrible. Mego, it's, it's snappier, and it has way more interplay between all of these devices. So this is just something for you guys to think about, to open your little uh, app developer horizons or whatever you're doing with your company, just to keep that in mind that this is out there. Oh, and uh, Intel actually has a Intel actually has a million dollar fund um, that they've launched uh, for Intel App Up. So if you do port your um, your apps into the Intel App Up store, uh, I think you get like, it changes, uh, they, have, they have different deadlines, but the one thing that is consistent that I find incredibly attractive is they do dollars for downloads. So they'll match you uh, $2 per download of your app. And Intel is extremely aggressive in trying to get the developer community to start to develop on Mego. Uh, you can talk to me after if you want to know more about the Intel App Up Store. I don't want to waste all my time on that. And uh, who's developing? I actually, um, according to the uh, write-up that we sent up, I was going to have Chris from uh, Soma Games talk about uh, porting your iPhone games onto netbooks. Um, it was a more technical discussion because I'm not a technical girl. I'm a ecosystem blogger. I tend to like look at things and ask you questions. Um, I can't field technical questions on that. But I can give you Chris's information if you want if you want to learn more about porting your iPhone game onto netbooks. So Intel is also uh, working very strongly to get all these developers to work there. And again I don't work for Intel. I just think it's really cool to get uh, applications that work on netbooks and in or in the future in vehicle devices that this is really a push to kind of um, get these applications to work off a broad horizon of, of devices within the uh, consumer electronic community. And this is why I wanted to kind of rush through all of that. Uh, I want to talk about the iPad because uh, Netbook News, we cover netbooks, net tops, uh, smart, smart books, and tablets, right? So the iPad is obviously a very interesting part of the tablet ecosystem as it's the only tablet in the ecosystem at the moment. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about why I don't like the iPad. And, <laughs> and I know that uh, most people um, love Apple, and I mean, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be very forthcoming right now. I own a MacBook, and I own a Touch. I think the Touch is one of the best mobile internet devices on the market. Uh, the MID section has died apart from the <laughs> apart from the touch. So I mean, I'm not I'm not an Apple hater. So please don't please don't, <laughs> please don't attack my blog later. Don't go away from my notebook. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason why I'm not a big fan of the iPad is I I feel that it's substandard hardware. If you look at other tablets that are on the market or sorry, other tablets that are coming to the market. The iPad has no connectors, which for me kind of closes it in. And I could go through the exact same debate that everyone's gone through about why the touch of the iPhone won't work. So let's just get past that and get to the, the, the basic statement that 
because it has one connector, and that connector is currently proving to be faulty. Um, it, it's called one connector, people. I mean, it, like every other tablet that's coming out of the market right now, um, like the Notion Inc. So this is an Android tablet. Oh no. This is, this is an Android tablet. Um, uh, it's got HDMI, it's running NVIDIA Tegra 2, so uh, the media processing at 1080p is gonna be amazing. You can use it as uh, an HD encoder, and decoder, and all of this you can kind of do with, with, the, um, with the iPad, but the fact remains that every other tablet that's gonna be coming out of Computex has multiple connectors. It's gonna have at least one or two USBs, it's gonna have an SD card, it's gonna have a connector that doesn't have uh, issues charging via USB. I mean, if it has one connector, and they couldn't even make that connector work properly. I mean, like, I had, I had to learn why, and I'm gonna share with you, and I'm sorry if you guys already knew this, but when you plug in something via USB, uh, the device has to let the, the thing that you've plugged, in, plugged it into know that it wants power. So, that one connector isn't transmitting the right information to actually get the device to charge. And Apple's actually already come out openly and said that there is wireless, is wireless issues. But talking about the tablet ecosystem, right, the iPad is a substandard piece of hardware. But that, isn't, that, that doesn't mean that I'm saying that everything about Apple is bad. I mean, their, their, um, their app store, nobody's caught up yet. I mean, it's still hands down one of the best stores on the market. People buy everything from that store. And you know, so do I, because I have a touch. I'll admit it. But the reason why I think that Android is a way more interesting ecosystem than Apple is because of media, because of your ability to interact with media. Uh, the New York Times and uh, Time Magazine are already openly shopping for uh, their own software to put on their own devices that will rival the iPad. Um, and the reason why they're doing this is because once they put their, their um, newspaper or magazine into the iPad, Apple won't give you any more information, right? So Apple can actually hold on to the click-through rates, how people are interacting with these new magazines that you can play ads within the paper. I mean, it's, a, it's an exciting device for the ability for advertising opportunities for media, but Apple's holding on to all that information so that the people who are, you know, media, like the New York Times, can't actually figure out how the, how the media is being consumed, how they can move forward. The New York Times had an epic fail for the fact that it had, what, 10,000 views and it couldn't make a buck, right? And now they're trying again on these devices, and, and like the iPad is supposed to be the savior for this media, but if they're going to be giving all their information to Apple, wouldn't that just make Apple better and not necessarily have the media that's trying to make a go on this any stronger? So that's why I believe in Android tablets, because they can offer the same kind of experience. They'll have connectors. And the fact that Google, when you go to their store, will allow you to have information on how your products and media are being consumed. So that's my big uh, speech on why I don't like Apple and why I like other, other Android devices. So Computex um, is going to be the big show for that. Well, that's my information. Um, yeah. So I'm Nicole from Netflix News. Please visit my blog. That's my Twitter there. And yeah, thank you.